Good morning. Uh, I will talk about early detection and prediction of cardiac toxicity by using cardiac biomarkers. I will start with the rationale for biomarker use, uh, existent cardiovascular biomarkers and guideline, and will focus on novel biomarkers. Over the years, cancer treatments have become more and more effective, effective leading to a significant decline in cancer death rate. Therefore, the problem of cancer therapy-related cardiovascular diseases is rising. Traditional anti-cancer drugs, in, in addition to newer agents, may induce left ventricular dysfunction. We know that the spectrum of cardiovascular complications of can cancer therapy is wide. Different drugs can cause arrhythmias, hypertension, myocardial ischemia and thrombosis, as well as impaired myocardial contraction. The, cardio the cardiotoxicity definition is based on both heart failure symptoms, in addition to evidence of left ventricular ejection fraction reduction. However, this definition has a critical limitation since myocardial damage is detected only when a significant functional impairment has already occurred. Uh, using this definition will no, not allow us, us for an early preventative strategy. It is important to understand that cardiotoxicity is a continuous injury. We are interested at uh, the initial uh, level of the uh, injury, while the injury is still reversible. For that purpose, we can use cardiac biomarkers. So we have different types of cardiotoxicity. We have the type 1 cardiotoxicity, which induced by antracyclines. It's a cumulative and dose-dependent with a very high incidence of cardiotoxicity rates. This kind of cardiotoxicity is irreversible because of cardiomyocytes death due to necrosis and apoptosis. On the other end, we have the type 2 cardiotoxicity, which induced by herzeptin, which is a dose-independent, lower incidence rate rates uh, and typically reversible due to car cardiomyocyte dysfunction. The question is whether or not we can use the same biomarkers for these two different cardiotoxicity mechanisms. So if we are looking about the candidate biomarkers, we can divide them into biomarkers that are related to different pathways or mechanisms that eventually cause the cardiotoxicity, the myocyte injury. These are galactin-3, which is a marker for cardiac fibrosis. We have soluble FMS like tyrosine kinase 1 and placental growth factors, which are markers for vascular remodeling. We have different markers for inflammation and oxidative stress like myeloperoxidase and GDF15. As well as more general cardiomarkers from biomarkers for myocyte injuries like the highly sensitive troponins. So cardiac troponins are the gold standard biomarkers in the assessment of myocyte damage. They have both very high diagnostic as well as prognostic values. A cardiac troponin has consistently demonstrated clinical value in predicting cardiac toxicity after anti-cancer drugs. They have a very high negative predictive value, almost 100% uh, at different regimen. However, the positive predictive value is still not high enough. Uh, I negative predictive value suggests that negative troponin measurements for our patients during treatment can be used to assign a lower risk status to select patients who are less likely to benefit from cardiac screening at routine intervals. However, we still need to increase the specificity as well as positive predictive value. We can do that by using a multi biomarkers approach. We can try to find new biomarkers or to decrease threshold of the assays. This is a suggested algorithm for the management of cardiotoxicity in patients receiving anthracycline. Uh, suggest a routine uh, troponin measure at each cycle. When troponin returns positive, suggesting treatment with ACE inhibitors as well as increased interval of cardiac imaging. The ESC guidelines also propose the use of cardiac biomarkers for the detection of cardiotoxicity. They suggested troponin I, high sensitive troponin, BNP, and anti pro BNP. Different mechanisms um, are related to the cardiotoxicity of anthracycline. This is a sample of doxorubicin, which, which enters to the cardiomyocyte. It increases free radical through the activation of the ROS pathway. 
um, increase uh, senescence pathways as well as apoptosis. And this regulation of the nitric oxide through its effect on NO synthase. Uh, these are biomarkers candidates re relevant to the pathways of uh, anthracycline causes cardiotoxicity, uh, myeloperoxidase, GDF15, and NO. Uh, different different anti-cancer therapy like aceptin uh, can cause more vascular damage than cardiomyocyte damage through the reduction of endothelial nitric oxide in the smooth muscle cells, therefore reduced NO bioavailability and even has anti-angiogenic properties, increased angiotensin 2 and increase in ROS. Uh, all of these uh, pathways can cause eventually endothelial dysfunction and other candidate biomarkers like uh, soluble FMS, like tyrosine kinase 1 and placental growth factor. So this study was published almost two years ago. Uh, cohort of almost 80 patients with breast cancers undergoing therapy with doxorubicin and trastuzumab. Eight biomarkers hypothesized to be mechanistically relevant to cardiotoxicity were evaluated at baseline and every three months up to 15 months. Uh, the result, they wanted to determine if biomarker increases were associated with cardiotoxicity at the same visit and at the subsequent visit over the entire course of therapy to find out whether or not this biomarker can be used as a predictive biomarkers. And all biomarkers except for anti proB and PN galactin 3 demonstrated increases by three months. Increases in myeloperoxidase. Uh, PIGF and GDF15 were associated with cardiotoxicity not only at the same visit, but also at sub subsequent visits, suggesting that these three biomarkers can be used not only for the detection of cardiotoxicity, but also for the prediction of cardiotoxicity. Transcriptomics, proteomics, metabolomics, and immunomics can all provide an inventory of data relating to changes in cellular levels of mRNA, protein, proteins, modification, metabolites, and immune activation during different clinical situations, including acute exposure due to anti-cancer drugs. The omic technologies allow a systemic biological insight into the pathways of acute injury. Regarding cardiotoxicity, this data can be coupled into with uh, different cardiac imaging in order to uh, identify those at, those at the greatest risk of developing cardiac dysfunction. This work uh, analyzed the proteomic profiling of uh, longitudinal plasma samples of patients with breast cancer undergo treatment with doxorubicin and trastuzumab. Three cases and four match control identified over 1,000 proteins However, the protein that demonstrated the largest differences between cases and control was IgE. In patients receiving these treatments, I baseline IgE levels are associated with lower risk of cardiotoxicity. This novel finding uh, implicates that the immune system can be a potential mediator in doxorubicin and trastuzumab induced cardiac dysfunction. The multi-biomarkers approach. This is a model-based probability of cardiotoxicity according to changes in different biomarkers. We can see that myeloperoxidase and troponin appear to offer additive information with no significant correlation, suggesting that these biomarkers are reflective of orthogonal bio biological access and can have added value when we're checking or examining several biomarkers. Another future perspective uh, for cardiac biomarker can be the macro microbiome. Uh, the food that we digest uh, may be metabolized uh, in our gut, uh, uh, with our gut uh, microbiota, microbiome, uh, to create different metabolites that eventually absorb in our blood. These metabolites are associated with different illnesses. For example, the trimethylamine deoxidase, TMAO, was found to be associated with atherosclerosis, with renal failure, as well as with heart failure, as patients with heart failure have significantly <clears throat> higher levels of TMAO compared with uh, match control. It will be very, very interesting to find out if different uh, microbiota signature 
can predict uh, cardiotoxicity due to different drugs or different metabolites that can be measured in our blood through metabolomics can also use as uh, candidate biomarkers for cardiotoxicity. Another, another option for the, measure, for the measurement of biomarkers are excel breath. We know that with each breath we excel, thousands of molecules are expelled, giving everyone an individual breast sprint. Breast analysis has the potential to offer a relative inexpensive, repeat, non-invasive method for the detection and monitoring of variety of diseases. We have several candidates for that purpose. We have the nitric oxide, the, vo the volatile organic compound, both are related to oxidative stress and to cholesterol metaboli metabolism. Can this, uh, can, can, by using Excel breath, we can find different biomarkers. So despite many studies demonstrated the potential of biomarkers for the predictive value of cardiotoxicity, many questions remained especially regarding the thresholds of each biomarker, the added value of new biomarkers, and the validation of these results in larger cohorts. The role and type of biomarkers used for the detection of cardiotoxicity must continue to evolve as new targeted cancer therapy with different mechanisms of cardiac injury are introduced into clinical practice. So the role of biomarkers in cardio-oncology care can be prior to cancer to cancer therapy for risk certification to ident and identify high cardiovascular risk. It can be during cancer therapy for the detection of cardiotoxicity, for the prediction of cardiotoxicity, and in order to prevent cardiovascular events. And of course, after cancer ter therapy for prediction and for detection of cardiotoxicity. Thank you very much. So, uh, even though biomarkers is an exciting field, uh, we will have to move on. <laughs>